Hello, we are excited to announce a new release of CAD Plus toolset with several major enhancements. In this video I will demonstrate the most notable ones. We would like to announce the name changes in the modules to make it consistent with the CAD Plus toolset. Custom toolbar has been renamed to Toolbar Plus, XBatch has been renamed to Batch Plus and Export has been renamed to Export Plus. Here is our subassembly which is floating and I want to fix it by using mates. To do that I usually need to scroll all the way up to select standard planes of solvers. And surely this could affect performance as I need to make a lot of scrolling back and forth. And there is a macro which you can download from Codestack website and add to a toolbar. This macro allows to select one of the three standard planes. In this case I want to have three buttons to select front, top and right planes. Previously I have to create three copies of this macro for each standard plane. But in new version of Cut Plus toolset, I can just pass argument to the macro and reuse the same macro with a different plane. I'm going to create three instances of a single macro file in a toolbar plus and pass front, top and right argument correspondingly. This allows to significantly simplify the maintenance process of your macro library. Let's restart Solvers and validate the result. We have a new Features Plus toolbar. We can activate it. It has three buttons and we can click to select the corresponding plane. So let's just quickly make this assembly to fix it in space. I will publish separate video which explains how to use this macro in a bit more details. So please make sure to subscribe to receive the notification. Quite often I receive a question from Cut Plus customers is what is the best site for the icons to use with Toolbar Plus. And in a new version of Toolbar Plus we allow to use scalable vector graphics in SVG format as an icons for your toolbar buttons. This will ensure the best quality of the icons regardless of the resolution of your screen or the button size. I simply need to select the corresponding filter and select the icon. I have just added a new button into the toolbar to open the component in the large design review mode. So after starting of solvers, I am able to find this command under the assembly plus toolbar. As you can see, the button has been successfully rendered from my SVG file. And if I would change the resolution of my screen or the size of my buttons, it will be appropriately scaled without loss of quality. Now let's select component and run this macro. So as you can see, the selected subassembly is opened in its own window, preserving the large design review mode. File has been opened successfully, however there is a warning indicating that there is no display mark in the configurations, which prevent it to open the component in the correct configuration. To fix this issue, it is required to assign that flag for each file in the assembly. But this could be very time consuming, as assembly might have hundreds or even thousands of files. In new version of Cut Plus toolset, we are bringing the Batch Plus functionality directly into assembly. So it is possible to run custom macros on all selected or just all components of the active assembly. Let's add the macro to add display mark to all configurations. Similarly to Toolbar Plus, you can also pass arguments into the macros from Batch Plus. Batch Plus will open all individual files and run selected macros. You can track the progress of the operation from the progress bar on Solver's icon. You have an option to open each file in their own window, like I did in this case, or you can keep them invisible. There are however some limitations of APIs which require a document to be visible. Once operation completes, you can inspect the result by navigating into the summary, status and log tabs. Now we can update the graphic of our model and click the macro again. Now we should be able to activate the correct configuration. And as you can see, our configuration has been activated successfully. There are also several major enhancements came to standalone version of Batch Plus. Firstly, you can open it directly from Solver's menu, in addition to opening that from the start menu of Windows. In this demonstration, I'm going to perform the job on all files within that folder and remove all the color from all the levels of each part. Note that arguments are also supported for the macros run from the standalone version of Batch Plus. There are several new options available in the settings tab. 
One of those allows to automatically save documents upon running the macro, and another one allows to forbid files upgrade. One of the biggest risks of batch processing is the unrevertible modifications of files. So there is a chance that certain error will be propagated to all the files participated in the batch job. One of those risks is upgrading the files to a newer version of SolidWorks. As you may know, SolidWorks is backward compatible, but it is not forward compatible. So it is not possible to open the future version of the file in the previous version of SolidWorks. So the simple selection of wrong version of SolidWorks might unintentionally upgrade all of your files. So in this case, I have an assembly and all the files in SolidWorks 2019, but I'm just going to run the job on SolidWorks 2020. And as you can see, because I have a forbid upgrade option selected, all of my files failed, and none of them were upgraded to a new version. We would strongly recommend to keep that option checked unless you explicitly want to upgrade your files. You can inspect the log to understand the cause of an error. In this case, it is clear that it was not saved because preventing upgrade of the file option is selected. I want to point your attention that this job took a bit over 3 minutes to process 36 files. But it can improve the performance significantly. Quite a lot of APIs in SolidWorks can work in the invisible mode. So a new version of Batch Plus will allow to open documents invisibly. So let's run this job again and select the correct version of SolidWorks. So now it's successfully performed. I have increased the speed of previous job 10 times and this job 5 times. And you can see that it is now actually performing much, much better. So you can see all the files were processed in just over 1 minute instead of 3 minutes from the previous job. Let's now open our assembly and validate the result. So you can see all colors have been removed from all the parts. And finally, there were few enhancements on Export Plus. Firstly, you can start the application directly from the menu of SolidWorks in addition to the Start menu of Windows. You now support eDrawings 2021 and you can select the version of eDrawings to run in case you have multiple versions installed on the computer. So here I'm just going to run a quick job to export HTML files using eDrawings 2020. Please follow the link in the description of this video for more information about CutPlus toolset. Thank you for your time.